Hey everyone, we have just had a update from Isaac on Frosthaven, some updates to the Necromancer, which is now to be called the Bone Shaper. And I thought it was a good idea to kind of go through uh, this update a little bit with you guys. Some people wanted to know my impressions. Also, we went over it a little bit on stream uh, when the news was breaking. So I feel like I've had some time to now kind of um, collect my thoughts a little bit on it and I wanted to do a video really that kind of goes over the update gives you guys the lowdown and what I really think about some of these changes and uh, yeah on how things are kind of like progressing with Frosthaven. So first up we have the change of the name I really really like this change I think we can all agree that Necromancer was a bit on the nose for Gloomhaven really most of the characters have like a twist on their name usually and I think that this is a really good change I think this is a much more fitting for the Gloomhaven universe so thumbs up from me and it really gives the character a kind of unique identity you know just the simple act of having a name that's not some kind of fantasy trope right it really kind of breathes life into the character so Bone Shaper big thumbs up from me I think that's a great name and perfectly fits what this character is all about. Next up, we have the player map changes. And I think overall, this is a big win. I really like the new style and the shape that we've got for these. Having those little slots for you to put your cards in either side. I think that's just a nice little touch. Uh, having the character traits as well printed along the top, I think is great. And it's going to really help speed up the event resolution. And it makes a lot of sense to kind of move to this system. And I, I think that generally the changes to the event system is really smart and very clever. Just being able to see this rather than them having to print 20 different class symbols on an event card in the future. It's just going to be extremely simple for us to be able to, to navigate that. And also, if you are into the role playing elements of the game, if you are a bit of a role player, then you can use these traits to give you a bit of a springboard for how maybe you want to play your character. Not everybody likes to play the game that way, but some do. And I think it's a nice touch to actually use these in that kind of way. I also really like the inclusion of the mercenary specific tips or these kind of like commonly forgotten rules. I think that's something that's going to be very helpful for new players, sort of like pitfalls that you might fall into with this character uh, and things you should be aware of. However, I'm not really sure if they need to be on the playboards themselves. I feel like the playboards should have information that is relevant for you from level one up to level nine, something that you need to reference regularly. I feel like this information is actually just going to be read once, maybe twice, and then never really read or needed again, which to me seems like a bit of a waste. Personally, I would have maybe chucked this on a card and put that inside the player pack instead. Some characters in base normal Gloomhaven have had that done before if there's some sort of complicated rule around what it is that they do. This might not be the best character though to kind of um, demonstrate the use of this space because this character is quite a vanilla character in terms of their mechanics so perhaps this will actually be much more useful on other characters so perhaps this is just not the best character to showcase the use of this but really what I was thinking was that it would be much better used to actually have all of the negative conditions on there instead because that is something that you might need to reference more regularly or some other information also now that the turn information isn't there, I'm kind of curious to know where the turn information has gone. Are we going to have another reference sheet with that on? Is that going to be something that players are just going to have to remember? Because although after you've played for a while, you don't really need the, the turn reference sheet, I think it is a very useful tool for new players. So I hope that that doesn't mean that the reference uh, sheet has just completely disappeared and we will still get some sort of like turn reference somewhere for, for players. What I do really like that's been included here though is the rules reference look cups on the bottom that gives you the kind of pages in the manual for you to go to to, to look up some important rules and that is a really really good idea to include those for the, the specific kind of rules that your character might need to deal with that's just going to help people look up the rules quicker be able to resolve things quicker as they play speed up gameplay and yeah I think that is an excellent inclusion and yeah really really good idea Funnily enough, I actually think that the back has the best changes here. I really, really like the way that they've redesigned the back of the boards. I love that the elemental affinities are there and the chart to show you kind of like a snapshot really of what this character is like. It's kind of funny because I actually did a similar kind of exercise with my Frosthaven first impressions video where I kind of did a, a, a similar type thing. So you can check that video out here but a lot of the information has now changed because this character has changed quite a bit um but 
I clearly undervalued the heals, or at least they're valuing the heals a bit differently to me. Um, so I only had up to level four, though, in my self-defense when I when I had that. Yeah, I think it's actually a really, really good idea. And they've done a much better job than I could possibly do here. And I think this is great because new players, they're not going to know what characters are about just from the name. They're not going to understand and they're probably not going to want to have to shift through and read lots of cards to get an understanding of, is this something that I want to play? So I really like the fact that it's been included. You can quickly look and say, okay, is this the kind of play style that I might be interested in? And that's great. Also, the, the elemental affinities are going to be so good in just trying to work out combinations and party compositions in the future. Just for you to see that, okay, this character uses this element and this element. Okay, what does this character use? Can they use the same elements? Can we share elements? I think that's really nice and that will certainly help... Um, smooth out some of those composition maybe uh, issues or, or might make up your decision for you. you might say hey let's play these two together because they work well uh, because of the element sort of sharing so yeah really really like the back of the board i think it's a home run 10 out of 10 a great job okay so on to the actual physical card designs and this is where i'm actually going to need some convincing and at first glance when i initially saw this i'll be honest i wasn't much of a fan First off, I find the card front frame and the actual card name and the font used a bit too kind of clean and futuristic um, for what is, you know, ultimately it's a high fantasy game theme, you know, at its heart. The original card frames had that kind of character that matched that setting and that theme. Although, you know, I can appreciate that in many ways the new frame changes have actually improved the readability of the cards uh, especially the name and some key information like the initiative and the card level is a bit more on display but the design to me is just a little bit generic and it, it doesn't have sort of the charm that the old frames had with all of the corner detailing and the top banner kind of with the names separated from the rest of the uh the kind of the rest of the main part of the card if you like it, it also just feels a little bit flat to me whereas the old card had like there were inside Set sections for the abilities now they are still kind of in set but for me it looks the whole kind of like a bit top and the bottom ability all kind of feel a bit flat uh to me rather than they used to kind of it felt more layered with the frames sort of sitting on top of the card if you like i feel like there needs to be some kind of compromise here that sits somewhere in the middle of these two things you know and i'm, I'm all for improving the readability I think that's you know great and that means that people are going to find it easier to play the game and to to know things but i would love to try and keep um some of that unique gloomhaven feel that the original cards have you know perhaps do like a slim down version of the original frames um but still get that kind of extra space that they obviously need for abilities because that's clearly something that needs to change i do really like though the subtle image background that they've put on and it adds some of the theme back in and some of that kind of depth and the new back design is awesome actually with all the detailing and it seems to include those old elements it's just a shame that we spend most of our time looking at the front of the card not of the back so i would like to kind of see some of those elements that they've put on the back kind of flow through into the front and and I don't know, a bit of a homage maybe to the original frame I do really like the change with moving the burn and the XP symbols to the bottom right in their own box. I think it just makes the whole thing tidier and it makes sense. It also cleans up some rules ambiguities that were happening on a few older cards. Things like the mind's weakness where it wasn't obvious if you maybe got the XP every time you activated it and things like that. It just makes it much easier. You put it in the bottom corner and then there's no sort of arguments there with, with what you do with the card and the persistent ability icon. All of those things I think is great. But I'm not a huge fan of actually moving the element symbols down there. Uh, I find that elements are a key part of playing an ability. It's often a reason as to why you will play an ability. Now, you know, XP is obviously a great reason to play an ability, but that is, in my opinion, fundamentally tied to the ability and the reason why you want to play the ability. And hiding it a little bit in the corner may just mean that people forget to generate it when maybe they should, or perhaps they don't see the connections between different cards. So in my opinion, I think that Elements should actually be moved centrally. They are a fundamental part of playing the ability. They are often the reason as to why you would want to play an ability. So I think hiding them down there is just, yeah, I, I think that they should have a more prominent place. I really like the fact the image of the summons are now on the card. Presumably it's been mainly done so that you can pick out your standees easily on the board and in front of you, but also it just breathes some life into the summons so that when you look down at your board, you can see that's a skeleton, that's a living spirit, that's a corpse. You 
you can see all of those things in front of you and it just makes them kind of pop a little bit more rather than just being tokens or shifting around on the board it just gives them a bit of soul if you like which is funny for a skeleton but anyway it does definitely breathe some life into these uh characters and yeah it's a, it's a really good change and i think it just helps give them a little bit more theme uh, and yeah really like that change with summons definitely a little bit confused as to why the range icon has been changed i don't see why it needed to be changed perhaps there was some confusion with what it is or perhaps it's some foreshadowing because they want to use a similar bow symbol somewhere else in the game i'm not too sure just seems a little bit strange to me why they would change it because the hex symbol to me has always sort of been more synonymous with movement rather than range but hey that's just me so yeah i mean it's if it's a change that they think is worth doing then absolutely then it doesn't really change things for me I will say, though, that the self-damage icon that they've put on, I think the sort of spiky surround edge that they've put on it makes it look a little bit too much like stun. And in fact, the first time that I saw the card, I did actually think it said stun. So um, I think that that could just be changed. I think just the, the drop, the, the sort of the blood drop with the minus in is very clear information. I don't really see how that can be... Um, how that can be misconstrued maybe people might you know only see that and then presume it's a plus i don't know perhaps people won't notice the minus or the plus so perhaps there does need to be something there but for me i don't think it should stay in black and white it's particularly bad i, I mean in color obviously blue is obviously the color of stun so that's not so much of a problem but it's just in the black and white format that you see on these skeletons i just think it's a little bit too similar that's all but it's a minor it's a minor thing so now on to the elephant in the room, the new ability and the shorthand. Now, I completely understand that the more space needs to be found on the cards to allow more ability text because the mercenaries are getting more and more complicated and it's getting more and more difficult to fit the text onto these cards. Completely appreciate that. And it's something that need, does need to be addressed. It's definitely something that needs to be addressed. However, on cards that don't actually benefit from that additional space because they have fairly basic abilities i don't see what's so wrong with just chucking the word move or attack or target onto those cards i get that the idea is use a universal system so that people learn the different iconography early starting the game straight away from the scratch then when they do get to the more complicated stuff and then you understand the language of the game right and that's the reason why you then understand what the game is is trying to do but i just don't really understand why we couldn't chuck those words on there if the space permits because otherwise the cards to me just look a little bit empty there's also something to be said for jaws of the lions tutorial cards i thought they were very good to give each character a set of uh cards that were actually completely explained the abilities that you got and you can just go through them and uh, they would explain exactly what it is that those characters did with those cards what the abilities do and i don't see a problem with maybe doing that here with at least the level one cards the level x if the space permits to allow you to you know transition if you like similar to how perhaps in magic i always refer to magic which is pretty telling but in magic the gathering similarly in like core sets you know that aren't they often will occasionally if they have space they will actually elaborate on what it is what the icon means or what the keyword means right so if trample does this you will see trample written in many places sometimes and it never explained on a card but occasionally on the odd card here or there they'll still explain what trample actually means on the card and i don't see why there's any reason why we couldn't at least kind of have i don't know uh, i guess like a run-up if you like in some way in which at level one perhaps we do have the information and the words written as to what the symbols mean if possible of course and then we transition maybe into this uh, there's also something to be said for me that my feeling is is just having a handful of cards with just symbols just sort of staring back at you is it's going to be confusing for new players and it's even going to be kind of confusing to seasoned players i think because the cards are going to lose their individual kind of identity as they just kind of become boiled down really to what their bare bones pardon the pun with the own shaper um but without those words sort of helping you to recognize and pick them out quickly it's not just the name of the card that i'm looking at it's the ability i remember the abilities on the cards so having you know several cards that do very similar things one does poison maybe one does curse 
I don't know if sitting in a hand of cards, that's really going to pop out and I'm going to be able to immediately differentiate between the two. So I have a, a bit of a worry that this kind of ends up being a big kind of muddle of symbols in your hands. And in, in the end, it becomes kind of a bit difficult for you to pick out those cards and really kind of see the card as something special because it's just a load of symbols on a card. But without really playing, it's hard for me to really make a judgment on this. And it's also perhaps just this character. I need to see more characters. So yeah, the jury's not out on this one yet. I don't really know. My initial thoughts are though, that I think it could do with some changes, but absolutely they need to make some sort of change because if we want to get more complex things in the game, then they're going to have to find ways of, uh, of fitting, fitting them on the cards. So it's going to happen. So yeah, I just kind of think that there's maybe a few different ways maybe it could be approached. All right, so now all of the design things are out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about the cards for the um, Bone Shaper. I'm not going to do like a full guide here at all. There will be a video coming uh, once the game is finally out and I've managed to play the character, I will be doing a guide. However, let's just talk a little bit about the changes. I think it's important. So if you are scared of spoilers and you don't want to spoil yourself, you're sort of ahead of the level one cards, um, then turn off now because we will be talking a little bit about some of the the other cards that this character has that are above level one so i think there was some changes that are worth speaking about and definitely some changes for me anyway at least so the first big change is that flesh shield bottom has been buffed but it's been moved from level four to level nine. Now, in my first impressions video, which I'll link up there, although the information is now outdated because of these updates, um, I flagged up that this ability might be broken and then it had the potential to be kind of abused. Really, you could kind of go infinite if you like by um, putting the damage that you would have to take by summoning onto one of your skeletons because the difference between the skeleton having three health and one health, they're probably going to die uh, to one hit anyway. So to me, it didn't really seem like too much of a drawback. So perhaps that was the case. Perhaps they found that that was a bit too strong, that kind of loop. Also, we've had some very, very strong cards um, being nerfed or completely switched around in the levels, which is kind of to be expected though. Um, as the character is balanced out, I'm sure this will be the case for many of the characters. Um, Putrid Cloud uh, has been moved to level three from level two, which is interesting. And I think that's going to be a cornerstone card of this character. I don't think there's been any fundamental changes that have been made to like the mechanics. I think summoning an army of skeletons is probably where you want to be. And then they're going to go around, do your bidding, and then you can blow them up to do lots of poison attacks and have some nice interactions with poisons and curse and things like that just basically poison everything i think is what you want to be trying to do here um it still seems to be that that is the main kind of aim with this character but with the removing of the flesh shield bottom for me the allure of playing this character has sort of diminished a little bit you know i was very excited to abuse that i thought that was going to make it very interesting or at least the allure of playing this character before level eight because oh my god look at this big boy damn boy he's thick boy that's a thick ass boy this just might actually be my favorite gloomhaven thing ever it's just so thematic that you're gonna have this thing beefy thing that's gonna like feed on your skeletons as it goes around creating this giant horrific kind of blob of of bones and uh, and and cartilage as it kind of just rolls around into enemies destroying them and just re and then like reanimating within itself you get more skeletons feed it into it again i just love it it's just such a good triumph of sort of like theme and card design it's just like the perfect marriage of theme and card design for me in any gloomhaven card i think we've seen so far it's just an absolute home run i i love it i think it's really really exciting and boy has it got me excited for other characters because if this is the kind of caliber of card that we've got coming for us then we are really in for a treat with frosthaven because this looks awesome looks so so cool and i honestly can't wait if it wasn't for the changes to flesh shield because flesh shield to me look would look like a very interesting way to level with the character and look like i would have an early card that i could really exploit and have fun with um now it's more like you're playing a more kind of traditional kind of summoner build if you like with some you know new nuanced kind of 
elements to it. It's definitely not as like other summoning characters that have been in the game before. Definitely got some different stuff going on. But yeah, this re this card really sets it over the, the top for me. So awesome. Absolutely love it. And I'm really excited to do a guide, which I will eventually do once I get the game and, and to play this character really. Probably not going to be one of my starting characters because I'm still really excited in the Geminate. But yeah, this is this is just awesome. So it's really nice to end on a on a high note there. And I think the main takeaway here is that the Bone Shaper is looking really, really cool. I think that's definitely a, a big takeaway here. They're looking awesome. And if all of the characters kind of come close to this, then I think we're in for a really, really good game. So I'm very excited now. This has definitely got me pumped. And although there are some things that I think, you know, with the design that might need to be looked at or changed or I'm not personally fully behind yet i think we can absolutely be rest assured that they are making an awesome awesome game here it looks like so we've got a lot to be excited about when frosthaven finally launches this year all right guys just a nice short little update video for you there because some people wanted to know my thoughts on this new update and i hope you enjoyed the video if you did consider tossing a like and subscribing as always also you can always ask me any questions at twitch.tv slash mandatory quest where i stream every monday wednesday and sunday just gloomhaven really so come hang out talk gloomhaven talk frosthaven and just have a grand old time but as always guys thank you all so much for watching i will catch you in the next video bye well, I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh the flip. That's the best thing from Jeff. That's the blessing so, from uh, uh, Isaac. At this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital version? <laughs>